educational attainment. I know you've heard, several of you have heard me talk about this several times, but it's, it's very important. I, this is probably the biggest challenge going forward. 2009, and we'll get some more data here in the next month, that's our ranking versus the other metro areas in the state. Last, whether it's for a four-year degree or high school or higher. The region has made progress. If you look at it versus 2000, we have made substantial progress, but of course the other areas in the state are also making progress, and that's how, that's how the rankings work. What has troubled me, and if you look at the last year or so, this percentage here, four-year degree or higher, it has actually dropped some. But doesn't that directly relate to the folks who are leaving the area? That's it. I, that's what it tells me. Now, of course, this has a little bit of a margin of error, but it looked like it was more substantial than the margin of error. So if you put the pieces together, who's left the area 25 to 34 year olds? Educational attainment percentage has dropped a little bit. Something to think about. All right. All right. And this goes to the global insight that we were talking about right before I started. And I don't know how many of you have seen this report, but I'm going to leave you with a question to think about, and we can talk about it for a couple minutes. This came out two or three weeks ago. They evaluated all the metro areas in the United States, and the question they were asking was, how quickly are you going to recover from the current recession? So their data showed 22,400 jobs have been lost since second quarter 06. And since 2000, we've actually lost about 25%. They predict unemployment will remain over 11% through 2013. The current rate in our region is around 12 and a half to 13. Uh, we're one of three MSAs in the Southeast. Rocky Mount and Dalton, Georgia were the other two. It'll take more than 10 years to recover from the current recession. That's only to get back to the 06 level. It didn't say how long it will take to get back to the 2000 level. So based on all of this information, Tyler, are you this talking study, about are you talking about jobs or percentages? Both. 22,400 jobs have been lost. And what they were trying to figure out was how quickly will it take to regain those 22,400 to get back where you were? Right, but our unemployment rate was around 6 to 7% at that time. Are you talking about in, in 2022, we'll be back to 6 to 7% unemployment? Or are we going to be, get back these jobs that we've lost? Because I think it's like 47,000, as you stated, jobs that we've lost. Are we talking about getting back to net zero in 47,000 jobs that we lost? Are we talking about getting back to six to seven percent? Because we expect the population to increase over that period of time, so it's going to take even more than forty-seven thousand jobs. If your if your area is growing, you're going to have to have more jobs. Because the other question is, is how many are participating in the labor force? Because that's a question too. If they're not participating, True. they don't get counted. So if you have more retirees, they might not necessarily be in the labor force. On the flip side. If they've given up searching for work, they're not going to be counted either. And nationally, we have one of the lowest labor participation rates in the country that we've seen in a long time. But what this survey was asking specifically was, you've lost 22,400. How long does it take to gain those 22,400 back? Okay. Yeah. So, so it's not the percentage. It's not, it's not, it's literally just getting back to where you were back at that 06 level. Okay, so then the last slide. Okay, based on everything I've talked about and this economic outlook that came from Global Insight, how is all this information going to impact development in the region in the next decade? And I'll leave you with that to think about. Yes? Uh, Pal, I'm, I'm glad you used that uh, Global Insight report. You heard of that when it was released about a month ago. and, and uh, I'd forgotten about Rocky Mountain, Dalton, Georgia, but I saw Hickory in particular. But, Hick but those cities were linked. It, 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 the, the good news was the cities that you showed us, here there's so, so much correlation in the trend that you have 
the Charlotte and Raleigh will recover to 06 and 07 employment in two or three years. However, these other groups of city, cities, uh, Dalton, Georgia, Rocky Mountain, Hickory in the southeast, but the rest are the Detroit and Gary, Indiana, the, the, the Rust Belt cities, will take 10 more years. And, we, and the Employment Security Commission tells us now that the number of folks working in Catawba County today are 3,000 fewer than 1990. So the, those employment trends are consistent with your demographic data. Young folks leaving in the employment age are, are, are gone, They'll probably never come back. So it's, it just seems to me the question is about jobs, proven jobs, and, and what are we doing about that to bring about a rest of the recovery and restoration to our, our market? Anybody have any thoughts about that? Yes. I think a way to change jobs is to go back to the city legislation and to look at taxes and how other cities and states are going to get rid of taxes and create an account manager to control their services and assets. So the city and the government is small like it was made to be and not a big ordinance or a big government where it takes a lot of money to create or minimal impact and negative impact. Uh, yes. I don't know anything about Rocky Mountain. But Dalton is noted for carpet. Hickory is noted for furniture, both in the housing. The, you need new carpet, you need new furniture for new houses. So if you continue to think in old terms, then it'll take 10, 20, 30 years to get back. Because we'll never, we'll never get back to that. It's got to be something different. If you keep thinking the old way, you're going to be, you're going to be 10 to 20 years. You've got to think something different. Uh, yes. I'd say that a lot of the 25 to 34 entrepreneurial types are making a huge mistake by leaving the area because you have, my guess is that the people folks 60 to 64 would be looking to, to sell their businesses in a reasonable amount of time, and the 25 to 34 would be, be the ones that pick that up, take them over. Anything they want? And if it's a desirable area, as the uh, that insight study consider like the influence of Charlotte overlay, you know, the overlap. You pointed out something very interesting for Catawba County. Look at the geography, and if you look at that corner, that corner is closest to Charlotte. Charlotte is expected to recover more quickly. What we don't know is if it recovers more quickly, is that going to expand and help that southeastern corner? Of course, you've got the new road that just opened up, so access has gotten a lot easier than it was two weeks ago. So it definitely, is, in terms of transportation, 150 is still a mess going to Mooresville, but 16 is bad. But, but 16 is a lot better. Is that an opportunity? You would think that because it's closer to Charlotte, that area would recover more quickly than the rest of the region yeah. just because of its geography. But what we don't know is how long that's going to take. Is that going to be six months, a year? I think it's going to be a very slow process. But that area, based on its geography alone, would seem to have more going for it than areas that are further away from Charlotte. Charlotte and what happens in Charlotte and Greensboro and Asheville, which they were also on that survey recovering more quickly, particularly Asheville. That's going to influence the area as well. So don't think of us as an isolated bubble. What goes on in these other areas impacts our region. And what goes on in our region impacts them as well. So they, you know, they definitely would want us to recover because it helps them too. But was that factored in in that 10 years? Is there any indication they considered it? Did they consider it? The influence of Charlotte when they said it's been 10 years to recover. That's a good question. I don't know. No, because that area lies outside the industry. One of the things is uh, the, the poverty level and the demographics related to that poverty level, and uh, looking at the aging population and how many of those people in that aging popu population, as you've stated, are in that poverty level, and markets aren't made from you know infrastructure or or you know all these other you know outlying issues they're made from people and if people don't have money then you're not going to have a marketplace and uh, as far as business you're going to have to go where the business is so 
naturally that area down around Denver is going to continue to grow. But what impact is this going to have? Uh, what specifics can you tell us about that senior population and the makeup of that senior population and, you know, are we going to be able to build a marketplace around people that are getting government assistance or living mostly off of government assistance and a government pension? Okay. That's a, that's a complicated question, but I'll take a shot at it. Uh, several factors you have to look at. One is how many of them they're going to be. And we're definitely going to have an increase in that. that that's a given. The question is, you're really asking is what is their wealth? And what is their buying power? Yeah, when the stock What's market's falling 500 points every day, I mean, their, their you know, retirement fund is not uh, substantial at this point. Generally, what I've seen is areas that have brought in retirees, the, the retirees that are coming in tend to have more wealth on average than the residents that are already here. And we do have, if you compare it to the other 14 metro areas in the state, we tend to have a higher proportion of seniors that are going to be low to middle income seniors than other metro areas. Taylor, I'm going to call it into this. We're, uh, we're at uh, our time now. Some people are having to leave, and I don't want to impose upon your time. But I do want to thank you for all the information, and we definitely don't want to shoot the messenger. I think you've given us. <laughs> you've given us I know some you know where I live. live. <laughs> well, I think one of the things that Taylor was very good at pointing out in there that while there's some bad news up here that we definitely need to address, there's also opportunity up here, and there's opportunity in a number of different ways, and there's opportunity for a number of different groups. It's not one group out here that's going to solve the issues that we have here. And so we need to look at this in a very visionary way and, and look at the way we've been doing things and maybe not staying with those, but how can we change and how can we be visionary and how can we change that, uh, the trend that's being set up here, you know? Uh, I think one of those was pointed out, if we continue to concentrate on furniture, which is associated with the building, then that's an issue. But maybe there's other opportunities because of our strong manufacturing base that we can bring in here that's not directly tied to housing. That was a very good point you brought out there. So it, it's things like that that we need to think about. And um, I'd like to take that opportunity to <clears throat> invite any of you to the Future Economy Council because I know where this discussion is going. It's going to the next month's uh, meeting. And we're going to be looking at a lot of these little areas uh, that uh, Taylor pointed out in there. And, you know, what suggestions can we make and, and what might be uh, some of the things that we can do based on some of those areas that we need to target. Up here. So uh, we meet the uh, third Thursday. Is that right, Danny? Third Thursday. I have to make sure I'm, I'm correct there. Um, at 8 o'clock at the chamber, usually. Okay? We've been moving these around some. So, uh, you know, if you want to come to those, uh, I think most of you are on that mailing list or you've got an invitation somewhere here. Uh, we'll make sure that you know where they're at. But all of you are welcome to come to the Future Economy Council meetings if, if you're not already coming to those. Uh, so, and we appreciate your, your input. We certainly appreciate you coming today. Uh, we want you to take this information back to whoever it will make a difference to. Okay, so if you need to report it to someone, be sure that you do. Don't just keep this to yourself. This is information that needs to be shared across the community. And take it back and do that. Uh, if you need some of this uh, slides and so forth, I'm sure uh, Taylor will be glad to get those to you. And uh, I hate to do this to you, but you are ready for presentations to other groups. Yes, too. yes. Myself or one other staff person will be doing these, but we'll try to get out to as many groups as we can as our schedule will allow.